YouTube. So today we are going to do a problem, um, problem number 92 from chapter 4 from the section on superposition. So superposition just says that for a linear circuit, the voltage drop or the whatever you're looking for is going to be the sum of each individual pow um, power source added together. So in other words, in this problem, Let's take a look at this uh, circuit. We have a 10 volt independent voltage source here, and this is 60 ohms, 20, a 2 amp independent current source, and then we got 5, 5, 10, and 45. So superposition says that if we're looking for this voltage drop here, um, or in this case a voltage rise, so let's go from minus to plus, across the 20, um, 20 ohm resistor, then superposition says that that is the same, the V out, is the sum of the effect, uh, the effects of um, the 10 volt, so the 10 volt source, V 10 volt, plus the, the N. So what we're going to do is we're going to look at just the 10 volt, we're going to disable the current source by opening it, and then we're going to do the opposite. We're going to look at the um, just the effects from the two amp source by shorting out the voltage. So it's going to be the sum of those two effects taken individually. So um, obviously there's many ways to solve this problem. Um, superposition is just one way to do it and sometimes it's the only way that works. So it's a very, it's an important tool to have in your um, circuit toolbox. So we're going to look for the effects of just a 10 volt and then we're going to look for the effect of just a 2 amp and then we're going to add them together to find the total effect. And that is superposition in a nutshell. So first, let's go ahead and open, let's take a look at the 10 volt source. We're going to open this up. So open that up. And when we open that up, we can see that this 60 is then in, in series with this 20. We can also see that 5 and 5 are in parallel. So we got 5, 10, so this is really 10 here. 5 is in series with 10, and then 10 is in parallel with 10. And we have equivalent resistances in parallel with each other. The equivalent resistance is one half of that. So 10 in parallel with 10 is 5. So then what we really have is we have a circuit. Let's redraw this circuit. 10 volts here. And we got 60 and 20 here, and we're looking for V10 volts from minus to plus, and then that's going to be 50 right there. So now we have a voltage divider circuit. This is going to be 10 volts, this is going to be 10 volts. So the V, since this is going from minus to plus, V10 volts, um, you know. So V10 volt is going to be negative since we're going in the opposite direction of the, that source. So it's going to be negative 10 times, and this is just a simple circuit divider circuit. So 20 over 20 plus 60. And that should give you negative 2.5 volts. So that's V of 10 volt. 2.5. So that's the first thing we're looking for. Now we are going to short, restore the circuit, short out the 10 voltage, independent voltage source, and consider only the 2 amp. So now we're, restore, now we're going to short this out. And then we're going to restore the 2 amp. And we had a 5 here, and we had a 5 here, and this had been 10. Alright, so now we have just a network of resistors, right? And you can, if you're, um, you can go ahead and restore things, um, find equivalent resistances, and use current division. Now, I'm, I didn't do that way because, to tell you the truth, I have a really hard time seeing the parallel and the... Um, like the parallel and the, um, it's really easy, let me just say, if I was taking a test, I wouldn't use current division, I wouldn't 
simplify that because it's not my gift. Maybe it's yours, it's not mine. I can't see easily what this re the equivalent of resistance of all of those resistors are. So I chose the mesh method to find it. So then I said that's I A. Then I said that's I B. This is I C and this is I D. So then I began to construct my mesh equation. So mesh at I A, that's going to be 60 times I A minus I B plus 20 times I A minus I C equals zero. Okay, make sure you guys can see it. Okay. So the mesh at I now, I'm going to take a second to recognize that this one I've got here is a super mesh. When the border of two essential meshes is an independent current source, you can completely ignore it and then just treat, treat it like a big mesh. So this is a super mesh. So the mesh equation at the super mesh, that's going to be 60 times um, IB minus IA plus 45 IB plus 5 times IB minus ID. And then so I'm here. Now I'm going to go down here and we're going to go plus 5 times IC minus ID. And then over here, plus 20 times IC minus IA. That's all equal to zero. And then now we have mesh at ID. And that's going to be five times um, ID minus IC plus 5 times IB minus IB and plus 10 IB, all that's equal to 0. And then we have three equations and four unknowns. The fourth equation is going to come from the constraint equation. So that's going to give me IB minus IC is equal to 2 amps. Okay, so now let's go ahead and uh, construct our matrix I C I D equals All right, so from the constraint equation I have 1 for I B, negative 1 for I C, and 2 for constants and zeros everywhere else. So the mesh at IA gives me 60 for IA minus 60 for IB, um, 20 for IA, and then minus 20 for IC. And zeros everywhere else. And the super mesh gives me negative uh, 60 for IB, negative 60 for IA. And 45, and 45, um, and then 5, uh, negative 5 for ID, um, 5 for IC, negative 5 for ID, 20 plus 20 for IC, and then negative 20 for IA, and 0 for constants. And the last one at ID is going to give me 5 here, then minus 5 for IC, um, five, another 5 for ID, plus 5, and then a minus 5 for IB, I, 10 for ID, so plus 10, 0, and 0. So then, where is our simultaneous equation solver? So the 
let's input this information. We have four equations, four unknowns. So you get 0, 1, negative 1, 0, and 2. And 80, negative 60, negative 20, 0, and 0, negative 80. And then we got 60 plus 45 plus 5. And then 25 minus 10, 0, 0 minus 5, minus 5. 20 and 0 solve. Okay, so you should have found Okay, you should have come up with IA is negative 0 0.4 amps IB is 0 0.1 I C is negative 1.9 and I D is negative 0 0.45. Okay, so we're looking for the voltage drop across the 20 ohm resistor. The way that I've defined my um, my current, I always use counterclockwise is the direction of the positive current. So in this case, I have the positive current is I positive net current through that is IA minus IC. But since the direction of the voltage drop is the opposite, right? They're going from minus to plus instead of the traditional plus to minus. We're just going to flip it around. So it's going to be that voltage drop is going to be IC minus IA. That's the direction of the current. And then so that's going to be times 20, right? V is equal to IR. So then V of 2 amp is equal to that. So when I take IC is 1 point, negative 1.9 minus IA, which is minus negative 4. So that becomes plus 0 0.4 times 20. So this gives me negative 1.5 times 20, which should be negative 30. So V2 amp is negative 30, and V out is going to be the sum of those. That's going to be negative 32.5 volts. Okay, and that is problem number 92. So remember, you guys, if you got help from this page, please like the Facebook page and share the video. And uh, good luck in your studies.